our good friend Toby Redshaw, uh, Senior Vice President of fi all 5G whatever and strategy, and he's got a bunch of other things in his really cool title, uh, at Verizon is going to come and talk with us uh, 5G in nine minutes. Let's see if Toby can do anything in nine minutes. Toby Redshaw. Good morning, or as I should say, buenos dias. Um, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, as I'm sure you all know, especially the people that got to hear the uh, Mexican Independence Celebration until 3 o'clock in the morning the other day and didn't get any sleep. Um, just one little comment about that. As you can probably tell by looking at me, I am Chilango, which means I was born and raised in Mexico City. It's probably the best segment of the Latino uh, X world. Ask anybody. Um, Ask yourself this question, am I an ally to the Hispanic community? And I'm sure you all go, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, very open-minded, I think that way. Ask yourself the question slightly differently. Is there somebody in that community that's having a conversation somewhere going, yeah, you know, Susie, great ally to my community. And whether it's the Hispanic community or any other of the ones in the, in the rainbow of communities that need allies, see if you can become that person. Okay, so now 5G in eight minutes. Um, I'm also going to cover the fourth industrial revolution, so it's going to be 5G in six minutes, and I've got no slides. So um, raise your hands if you've heard of the fourth industrial revolution. Keep your hands up if you can explain what's causing it. Andy, that's not fair. Um, Andy's a uh, professor of the fourth industrial revolution down at U of I and knows everything about that. So essentially, it's four technologies plus one that are going to create this giant wave of change that's going to change everything. The difference with the fourth industrial revolution is they believe it's going to be broader and faster. The other ones changed the earth. They took decades. This one, broader, faster, probably takes about five years for massive uh, impact. So the theory is, and Pablo touched on this a little bit, and David also from Plot, um, four technologies are going to hockey stick curve starting about a year ago for the next four years. Uh, AR, MR, XR, virtual reality, mixed reality is one. Next gen cloud, uh, AI and big data, and then IoT. And when you look back 10 years, those things have really changed a lot. But um, when you look forward five years and then look back, uh, that's going to look like the flat part of the curve and it'll go like this, and I can go through each one of those uh, off stage with you and prove it to you, but just trust me, me and a bunch of smart people in Davos and Stanford and Oxford all uh, believe that's the foundation of the change we call the fourth industrial revolution. There's a fifth technology. If only those technologies could interconnect with a super low latency, fast, fast response time, fat bandwidth, thousand X more dense, uh, IoT capability with 10x better battery life, with compute right at the edge, so you had a computer in a supercomputer in your back pocket. Those four technologies would do new, cool, magic things. That thing I just described is literally the 5G spec. That's what it is. So 5G is not just one more G than 4G. Uh, it's not. It's not one louder, as they say in that awesome in that awesome film. Um, it's a huge step forward, and it's a huge step forward in two ways. It's no longer just a network. It is because it is software-defined and cloud-native, which you really don't have to understand what that means if you're not a, a techie. The, it goes from being boxes and wires to generic boxes with software. It's a software-based system. So the edge of the network becomes automatically compute. The radio changes, and you know that's what a network telecommunications network does, right? It's a bunch of pipes and then radios at the end, so you get stuff through the air. The radio changes in a huge way. It is literally a thousand X better uh, at connecting to IoT uh, devices in, in a dense geography. It's a hundred times faster. The latency, which means how quickly do I get an answer, is five milliseconds. So I can go Look at something with a dumb, cheap camera, do pattern recognition in a small AI system at the edge, and come back with intelligence in 25 milliseconds. That is one twelfth of a blink of an eye. So now these things become real time. So 
I can now develop platforms that are very different in a couple of ways. Um, it also does massive burst rates, so if I've got a locomotive or a jet that I need to download all the uh, onboard diagnostics, I don't have to go park it overnight. I can just pull up to a dock and blast it, uh, uh, and blast it all up. But think of it as 10 to 1,000 X better. Oh, it'll also talk to things that go 300 miles an hour. Uh, it'll also do metric speeds, so 500 kilometers an hour. Um, the engineers all laughed at that. The, um, so um, things like high-speed trains or drones, which I believe you're going to see a lot, a lot more of those. So let me give you an example with, um, uh, with a camera. I can take a dumber-than-dirt $50 camera. I can point it down an aisle at a giant box uh, retailer, and it can tell me in real time heat patterns of employees, heat patterns of uh, customers, how my, my shelving is doing versus my planogram, where, my, uh, where am, am I on inventory, I can do real-time demand shaping. I can take the same $50 dumb camera and point it at a circuit board uh, at a partner of ours, a manufacturer who make circuit boards, and tell you whether there's an anomaly in it. Today, they use a machine that's twice the size of that thing. Uh, and probably more expensive. Um, same $50 camera at a giant uh, airport in London that begins with H. Uh, I've talked to them about we can point it at humans and uh, detect the four patterns that humans uh, move in in airports, which are, I'm okay, I'm gonna be a happy customer with a good revenue experience for the airline. I'm late, I'm confused, I'm lost. I'm gonna be a bad experience and a bad revenue experience. I've had too many gins, I'm walking in a slalom, somebody should intercept that too, and then bad, uh, bad actors. Again, $50 camera, super low latency, you take that bandwidth, you do the processing uh, uh, at the edge. So that makes a generic, um, uh, I call it photonic sensorization, because if I use really big words, I can charge more. Um, but essentially, if you can give me photons, I can give you real time AI patterned intelligence at the edge for your factory, your mall, uh, your production facility, your distribution center. The AI to beat the Go champion in Korea or to do cancer genomics or to process the data out of the fusion lab at Lawrence Livermore, it's really, really hard. You need some really good people. The AI for pattern detection, anomaly detection to be proactive and predictive and personalized for a mall or a factory uh, or an energy plant, this is not hard AI. What I really just need is the capability to get the data and process it really, uh, really fast. So photonic sensorization as a platform, uh, AI at the edge as a platform, give me whatever sensor data you've got and I in real time will give you uh, um, the capability to be proactive, preventative, pattern match, personalized, peer connected, uh, precise. Um, I invented those six Ps, uh, except for two of them, which came out of one came out of Stanford and the other came out of Harvard. John Sviokla and Timothy Chu to give them uh, credit for that. Um, but I can take simple uh, sensor data and do that in real time, whether it's a distribution center. Uh, or an entertainment complex, or Area 15, which I have been to see and is super cool uh, um, when they finish building it. Uh, the other th cool thing is real-time AR. Uh, I can now take visual and sensor input and create eyes-free, hands-free images for you to do your job or to be better engaged at Giant Stadium or in Newark Airport. Um, so. It gives me capabilities that I have never had because I can do compute and real-time processing right at the edge with massive bandwidth. We're doing some crazy cool things for um, uh, medical. We're doing some really, one well, of my favorite, we're gonna blow right through some socioeconomic barriers uh, for education and really help level that up uh, with this technology. But um, some of my most excited customers are people that have factories, people that have distribution centers, people that have things that have lots of sensors, things that can, go, uh, that can go wrong. Companies will bifurcate into uh, uh, two of these new technologies. Remember, it's not just 5G, it's 5G plus these other technologies creating these platforms, which if you're a, a techie CIO, 
you've never had the opportunity where you have a platform that I can use in the back of my house with my employees, I can use in the front of the house with my customers, and I can actually put in the hand of customers. Normally, that's three purchases. It's the same platform. You just have to tweak, um, uh, uh, tweak uh, a little bit. So companies bifurcate into ones that are those six Ps and ones that aren't. I mean, which ones do you want to work at? The ones that have those or the ones that don't? Think of a hospital. Do you want to go to the hospital that is personalized and proactive and precise and preventative, or do you want to go to the other one? The icing on that cake is if you do embrace this and you do take on those six Ps, your operational costs are lower, your customer engagement is better, your customer life cycle costs are lower. And I wasn't the smartest guy at, uh, at business school, although I probably thought I was. Um, yeah, two people that know me go, yeah, he sure, surely did. Um, uh, but if my operational costs are lower and my customer engagement is better and my life cycle costs of customers, I will kill you in competition. Uh, that's what competition is about. So that's all of that in nine minutes, including my little uh, PSA about Hispanic Heritage Month and the explanation of the fourth industrial revolution. Thank you very much.